Well, to make sense of all you've heard so far, I'm now being joined in the studio by journalist, political commentator, and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Ikuku. Thank you so much, Doctor, for helping us, uh, uh, for joining us to help us understand all these issues. Well, the uh, Labour Centre is actually saying that the federal government has reneged on most of the agreements it signed with uh, them uh, uh, sometime in October, precisely October 2nd. You know, they were meant to actually go on strike October 3rd until they reach uh, a consensus. And this agreement was signed by all parties, but uh, they are now saying that the government uh, has acted more in breach than in more in fulfillment. What do you make of all that uh, my guests had to say? Well, I think, you know, let, let's lay a background for Sumner. You see, uh, labor unions worldwide, this is not unique to Nigeria, labor unions usually are in constant friction with governments due to the differences in priorities and interests. So the labor is more interested in workers' welfare, social programs, labor laws, safety regulations for their workers, workers' rights, uh, a fair wages. The government, on the other hand, is focused on broader social and economic policies. And so the, the labor unions always step in to say to the government, you have to balance those policies in a way that you, know, you bear in mind the rights of workers. And that's what's happening today in terms of uh, the tension between labor and the Nigerian government. So this tension specifically relates to, you know, the removal of fair subsidy. And when you listen to the conversation that has been had, and even with the interview you had with the fourth guest, I think the conclusion that you might want to come to is that the Nigerian government um, was totally unprepared for the fallout of the fuel subsidy removal and didn't have major plans and if it had any plans at all that plan was totally um, shoddy and shambolic at best and that's why most of the agreements that were reached they reneged because they were unprepared and so we are here today that's why they are fighting and uh, they've called a strike a nationwide strike for uh, february 23rd uh, that's uh, in nine days time and uh uh, the government is running, trying to plead for understanding and all of that. And uh, the meeting that was called uh, two nights ago ended in a deadlock. Uh, how do we proceed from here, actually? I mean, there were so many promises. The man reeled out, you know, whether it was the CNG buses, whether it was the 35,000 naira that was supposed to be paid for six months. Uh, there, were the, there was the palliatives and so many other things, the visitation to the refinery and all of that, most of it hasn't happened. Again, it shows that everything is haphazard at best. And so the threat continues. You know, last year, Labour also threatened that they would go on strike. Uh, they were caught at the table. Uh, money was thrown around and then they called of the strike. And again, this is happening. I think, or oh, I suspect, that um, the same thing will happen again because the Minister of State for Labour and the uh, Secretary of the Federal Government, Mr. George Akume, right? Yeah. George Akume, they have met with Labour and some other government officials and asking for more time and asking Labour to be patient uh, so that they can get to m much of the um, promises that were made. I'm not certain or confident that government is able to um, fulfill all those promises. Again, everything was put together in a hurry. And because labor most times, and it, they're not taken seriously, you know, there's always that merry-go-round of we give you this, you back off, and then you come again, you back off. So they're like, let's just give them something and hold it there. So I suspect that that's what is going to happen this time around. If labor in the past had most times thumbed their feet down, and shut down the economy, really shut it down, which will be terrible, really terrible for us now because it's going to cripple everything. But yeah, because if they had shown their hands, saying. yes, <laughs> if they had shown their hands and really go a long way to say, you know what, you're not going to be playing with the lives of Nigerians, then that would make a difference. I think government would, uh, to an extent, be even frightened by the commitment of the labor union to the workers. On the other hand, you also have to feel for the government. It's, n it's not easy at all 
the condition of Nigeria, the situation of Nigeria. I hear the man talking about uh, the government now saying that they inherited a lot of problems. Of course, they inherited a lot of problems. But they asked for the job, right? They would have known, because it is the same government that has taken over power, that um, this is not a, a joke at all. This is not a play. It's not for people that are not uh, ready to work. So here we are today. Well, let's see what happens uh, after all these um, discussions with labor. But maybe at the end of the day, they will back off again. And people are beginning to question the governance credentials of President Bola Tinubu and saying that, look, I mean, a lot of people thought that he was really, really prepared. He had a blueprint. And so people are beginning to wonder if the renewed hope manifesto of the federal government is a working document that could be relied upon by Nigerians to actually assess Tinubu as being prepared for office. So when how, you say how, we... <laughs> I, mean, I mean, people are beginning to put that manifesto in the open and saying that, looks, it looks like President Tinubu is working from the reverse angle from what he has stated that he will do. Well, renewed hope is just talk or word, you know. During elections... Was it just simply yeah. a campaign document? Look, during elections, Nigerians, uh, Nigerian politicians come up with all sorts of slogans. During Buhari's time, we saw it, you know, in the two terms, they come up with all sorts of slogans and they just want to win elections. And then, I think also, because you're far away from the government, when you get in there, the reality is totally different. I know, yes, President Tinubu has been a governor in Lagos State for two terms. And that was over 18 years ago. Okay, so From that's 1999 exactly. to 2007. And, and that's very different. Ni the Nigerian state is big. It's massive. With the massiveness comes the also massiveness of the problems. Um, so if you're not aware, and President Tinubu doesn't have the same energy that he had when he was governor of Lagos State. He doesn't have the same attention span. Um, it doesn't have the same focus. Yes, you can say or make the argument that he doesn't really need to work. All he needs to do is to put together a competent, excellent team. Okay, look at the team that he has put together. Some say he's Minister of Finance, uh, he's, he's minister, uh, a, a, a Central Bank Governor, that they look like people that um, are in jobs that are above their pay grade. What is their experience, Lagos State? So there are arguments to that effect. At the end of the day, people don't want to see any of that thing. Or what they want is results, and that's what, where we are today. And you know, the Labour guy made some very good um, points. Uh, so for instance, he talked about government weaponizing poverty. This is real, because you can see that the Nigerian populace is gradually, incrementally being totally impoverished. And that's dangerous. You know, the politicians might think that, oh, it doesn't matter, you know, whatever, you know. Or throwing palliatives yeah, yeah, but there. It, As long as you have a large population of poor people, it's also a danger to yourself because you cannot sleep with two eyes closed. You know, you, you can have all the money in the world and you can have high wars and everything. You cannot have a sane society and a, a quiet and, and enjoyable and peaceable life in Nigeria. So it's also your problem. It's in, in your best interest, actually, to have a population that has a fairly good standard of living and that is thriving and they're, they're not poor people everywhere. The man also talked about our democratic space is shrinking. Uh, when you don't allow protests. And that is very true. President Tinubu used to be an activist himself, and Lagosians or people from the Southwest are known as activists. You do not want a situation where your countrymen and a countrywoman cannot criticize you and cannot go there and go out there and protest. Things are difficult and people will continue to speak. They are not robots, they are human beings. Yeah, specifically, I, I, just before you go to that next point, right. he actually said that some of the women who protested in Kano and Niger uh, because of this food shortage and all of that were arrested, beaten, simply for what? Just coming out to say, we don't have food or we don't have money to actually buy this food. Some, it, it's tragic that one will protest and they will end up in jail. And there are women, there are married women with children, family people that are just saying that, you know, government has to find a way out of this quagmire. I think it's, it, 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 says, it speaks volumes 
of where we are as a government politically in the country. It's not good at all, and I think um, we need some change. So the man also talked about, I think this is very important, he said, our leaders want to play boy boy. Uh, that's the Nigerian <laughs> way of saying slaves. Of course, I mean. <laughs> to, to impress the World Bank. Yeah. And so I think this is relating the to the Woods electricity tariffs. You know, they are telling you to remove subsidy, they are telling you to remove electric electricity tariffs and all of that. Well, of course, you are tired because you collect loans from these people. You know, you are perpetually borrowing money. And so all that money that you are borrowing, there are conditions tied to them. If you don't want to obey those conditions or abide by them, then don't go borrowing. Then see that you have a country where you plug the leakages, a country where money is not thrown around everywhere. We speak every day about the National Assembly and how much money we're throwing into that. Nobody's talking about and thinking whether we need actually a part-time National Assembly where yeah. lawmakers have a full-time job and then they go there part-time. You know, the country is literally cash-trapped. So these are some of the things that we need to think about. He also talked about the level of sincerity. Is the government sincere? When you sit down with a labor, when you sit down with any group uh, in the country that is uh, working for, for, for the rights of citizens, are you sincere in what you say? Or do you just have the meetings for the sake of the ha meet, having the meetings and then you turn around and renege? on whatever agreement that you have made. And then also he, he talked about um, the blame game. He says that it shows that they have run out of ideas and that is dangerous. When you no longer have ideas, um, it's frightening, actually. All Nigeria right. is, is at the cusp of a crisis that can make or mar it. So I think that a lot of people are looking to see that there is hope that the government is able to really turn this around. Yeah, but before I just let you go, Dr. Constance Ikuku, uh, do you share any sense of optimism uh, as expressed by some of the government officials that the labor unions can actually come to an agreement with the federal government to avert this nationwide shutdown on February 23? And they can come to an agreement. Yeah. Of course, you know, an agreement can be reached. An agreement on top of an agreement. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, like they said, is the government sincere? You know, are they sincere or do they just want to say it and then turn mm -hmm. around and do another thing? So I suspect that the, the strike will probably not hold because the government will rush and do something. Mm -hmm. But again, the ball is in the court of labor. Do what you have to do to show the government that you are a serious organization that is fighting for the welfare of the citizens of Nigeria. Well... Uh, we want to thank you so much for helping us to understand the issues. Uh, just earlier today, the federal government said it will be uh, dishing out 42,000 metric tons of uh, 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 grains uh, free of charge to Nigerians. <laughs> uh, we are all waiting to see if uh, this will help to reduce some of the challenges on ground. But of course, for labor to have come out to actually see that the government is not meeting some of these items listed on the agreement it looks like it's a very very tough one ahead I must thank you so much dr constance Ikuku, for helping us to understand all the issues raised uh, by a representative of the nigerian labor congress right here one of the leaders of the uh, unions who are threatening to embark on a nationwide strike on february 23 which is just nine days ahead we're all hopeful that both parties will actually uh, reach a middle ground and of course the nation will not be ground uh, will not be grounded because the economy seems too fragile to be able to afford another uh, shutdown well that's how it's been for this edition of arise prime time do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in abuja goodbye and thank you for watching i'm somersan